Hey guys, today we're going to talk about memory allocation, and this is a follow-up on the last video we did where we learned about the new and delete commands and how to uh, allocate memory dynamically inside of a program. So up until now, we've only been doing stuff on the stack with static allocated memory, and by memory we're talking about RAM. Uh, and now we're going to we're going to be learning more about using the heap over here. So when you have any given program, it's going to be allocated some amount of memory on the stack. And uh, this is usually a fairly small amount, maybe a megabyte, I think, on Windows and like eight megabytes or something on Linux. Uh, and you can change that. It's adjustable. But most of the time, what you're going to be using is if you need more memory, you're going to be using the heap, which is uh, generally, you know, a lot more. And this is kind of a shared resource. And so on the stack, memory is allocated by the program and it is deallocated as as programs execute and things are popped off the stack so they're pushed on and they're popped off and i'll have some illustrations that'll help us understand that uh, and on the heap um you know it's it's done a little bit different so on this again on the stack uh, everything is in a continuous block of memory and on the heap it, it isn't or it doesn't necessarily need to be and so uh, that'll be important a little bit later on so let's go ahead and look at some code here i'm going to float in some code uh, so here we've got uh, some, an example code, and obviously this doesn't run, it doesn't make any sense, but uh, just go with me for this example here. So let's start down here in main where the program would start executing here. So here we see that the program somewhere in here would dynamically allocate some memory in main. And then, so there's some new statement here, and then it's gonna go ahead and call function one. And if we look up here in function one, we see that function one then calls function two. So while we're still in main, we're still in function one, we haven't exited either of those programs, we're gonna add uh, function 2 onto the stack and we can see that in function 2 some memory some more memory is dynamically allocated and then function 3 is called and so we can see function 3 up here uh, it uses the dynamically allocated memory somehow and then nothing else follows so this so uh, function 3 is then going to exit it's going to pop off the stack and then we're going to go down here to function 2 right here and we see that nothing follows so function 2 is going to exit and so that's going to pop off the stack and then function one here, we see the same thing. There's nothing follows function two. And so uh, function one is gonna pop off the stack. And now we're back here in main right here. And we see that, okay, there's gonna be some code here that deallocates the memory. So uh, I just wanted to use this as an example. So let's take a look at, at something like this. So let's. So here we have our main function. We've got function one, function two, function three. Uh, and these are all going to be put on our stack here. And then I'm just showing the heap and I'm showing that we have some other programs running, We're running Firefox, Mathematica, we've got some Zelda emulator running, and they're using some memory from the heap. These programs would also have their own stack as well, but uh, these are the resources they're using on the heap. Okay. And so when we first start a program and we call this main function, uh, we saw that it, it uh, allocated some memory dynamically so we've got this new struct or something that we've created over here and then the next thing it does is it calls function one and then we see that function one right called function two and we can see how things are stacking up right hence the hence the the whole name and we call this pushing we're pushing on each item and whenever we push on item we can only pop from the top so we can only take from the top we can you can think of this as like a stack of plates and so you can only take plates from the top you're not going to try and grab the the bottom plate it just wouldn't work and function two uh, we saw over here it d dynamically allocates some more memory and then function three should be called and then function three exits and then function two exits excuse me um, normally if we weren't dynamically allocating memory when function two uh, exited and then these these variables would be out of scope and they would be uh, and this memory would be freed up but that's actually what only happens on the stack with statically allocated variables and these were not statically allocated variables these are dynamically allocated variables and so that's the main difference here is when they go out of scope that memory is still allocated and then function two exits and then we saw that once main exited that then that memory was then deallocated and that frees up all these resources then to be used by another program. So um, that's the basic concept here. Now, what can happen if you're in this situation, and let's say for some reason, let's say function one was calling function two. We're, we're assuming a different program here. So function one is calling function two inside some loop. But let's say, so that loop executes, uh, so, uh, and it calls function two again. Uh, and then let's say it exits, and then it, calls function two again and so this so function two is still exiting but function one is calling it again and again and we don't deallocate our memory until main and we can see that if, if this kept happening 
we end up with this, <laughs> this mess over here. And uh, this would cause, this is called a memory leak, and this would cause uh, our program to freeze up or at least slow down. It might, if it was bad enough, it might even cause uh, the entire operating system to freeze up. You might have to like hard reboot or something like that. And so that's what you're trying to avoid, and that's why it's so important to deallocate memory when we're using it. Because what we're doing over here when this function is being called again, this might be something you, you actually do in a program where you call a function multiple times and normally you only call it, you know, five or six times we think most. And so it's no big deal that if, you know, we deallocate the, the memory in main, but if this program has the ability to be called over and over and over again, then eventually, no matter how slow it is, it's, it's slowly going to take up all of our memory and we're going to run out and uh, that'll cause the program to freeze up, slow down, and crash. Incidentally, that's actually one of my issues with uh, Camtasia because it has a memory leak. At least I, I'm, I'm fairly confident that's what it is. And, you know, when I use certain functions, I don't, I don't know what they are, uh, but slowly I can use them, and it'll work. But over time, the program starts getting slower and slower, and then all of a sudden it's freezing up, and then my whole operating system's freezing up, and, and it's, a, a, it's a hassle. So it's kind of crazy. Camtasia is like a $150, $200 software that caveat I didn't have to pay for, but uh, still it's a very expensive software and you would not expect it to have a memory leak. So this is something that happens in like, you know, everyday life with, with programs that are commercially available. So uh, it's really important to make sure that you are deallocating your resources, your memory, whenever you, you don't need it anymore. And what will happen is that once this heat gets full, um, your oper most modern operating systems will then uh, actually use hard drive space to save temporarily this stuff that would otherwise be stored in RAM. Like, so maybe if we're running this program here, Mathematica, Firefox, and Zelda, well, the, the memory that they've allocated that should be in RAM will actually get saved to your hard drive. It's called virtual memory. But the problem is, uh, I did some math on it, uh, and I don't know if these numbers are, are accurate, but uh, they're pretty close. Um, it's like 60,000 times uh, longer to access from your hard drive than it does from RAM. So when we're talking about milliseconds, that's obviously doesn't seem that long. But when you when you're talking about sixty thousand, that's kind of it's kind of crazy. So it takes considerably longer, no matter how you know, even if it's six thousand, it takes a lot longer to access stuff from your hard drive than from your RAM. And so that's why you want to again, you want to make sure that you're not using all those resources if you don't need to. And I'm sure you know if you really think about it, you, you can all probably think of examples of programs that you've had that maybe worked, but then after a while they slowed down and then they started crashing, and often that is because of a memory leak. So anyways, that's it for this video. Hope that makes sense. Uh, let me know if you have any questions at the bottom.